The Mavic Air 2 is an excellent drone. Being the youngest of the Mavic family, it features a lot of new improved technologies. In this video I will analyze another new technology feature of this model, HDR video, meant to improve the quality of video in high dynamic range situations. Since where there is a big difference between the highlight and the shadows. This is a very common situation with drone footage, as in a lot of cases the scene will contain both the sky, which is generally much brighter, and elements on the ground. HDR for photos is a common feature in cameras, drones and even smartphones, but in the case of video it is a much harder task. We will find out how the Mavic 2 performs. I've done plenty of detailed video about the Mavic Air 2, you will find a link at the end of this video and in the description below. If you're interested in drone, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel. HDR photography has been around for a very long time. It is very simple to take several shots in rapid succession at different exposure values and merge them into an image with extended dynamic range by taking the highlight from the darkest photo and the shadows from the brightest one. But with video things are more complicated. I've seen some tests of other drones or camera attempting a HDR video mode, but the results were generally disappointing, as the camera was simply increasing the exposure, resulting in very overexposed highlight, or bumping the shadows creating an evident lack of contrast. The Mavic Air 2 is the only DJI drone equipped with the half an inch quad Bayer sensor of 12 megapixel. The sensor has the ability to split each pixel in four smaller ones, thus giving the possibility to shoot some sort of 48 megapixel photo. This high resolution mode for photography has received mixed review, and the results are only on certain occasions better than the regular photos. For still images, it certainly cannot match the quality obtained with real 40 plus megapixel cameras. Please refer to my in-depth videos about drone photography if you're interested. But the main strength of the Quad Bayer sensor is supposed to be when dealing with video, and most precisely, with high dynamic range situation. I'm not going to get into an in-depth technical analysis about the size of proton at different light temperatures, as it would get quickly boring. To keep it simple, this sensor, after a discussion with the video processor, should be able to decide whether to use an entire pixel or half of it or a quarter to optimize the exposure of very bright or very dark areas. By clicking on the icon above the shutter, we can access the video menu, where we have a choice of normal, HDR and slow motion. If we select HDR, we notice that we have access to all resolution, up to 4K. But we are limited in the choice of frame per second. We can only go up to 30 FPS. So sadly, it's not possible to shoot video in HDR, 4K and slow motion. If we access the camera settings, we only have the normal color mode available. Also, notice that when in HDR mode, the exposure is automatic only, we don't have access to any of the settings. After we select the HDR mode, in certain light conditions, there could be an adjustment of the image after a few seconds. The sensor and the processor analyze the scene, have a chat, and might modify some setting accordingly. In HDR mode, the exposure values are often increased. I have noticed that first of all, there is a change in shutter speed, up to 1 25th of a second, assuming that we are shooting in 24 frames per second. If needed, there is also an increase of ISO. On several occasions, HDR footage can be quite noisy, especially when the ISO is raised. This is why I would suggest not using ND filters in HDR video mode. 
In most cases, it is an amount of noise still manageable with a good denoisers. I use neat video and I'm very, very happy about it. As we saw earlier, when shooting in HDR mode, the settings are automatic. But there is a little trick to find out the value used. In the setting for the camera, if the option subtitles is on, a SRT file will be written next to each video file. I then use VLC Media Player, a free software, to visualize the footage and the EXIF values should appear at the bottom of the screen. If you don't see them, go to the menu Subtitle, Shoot Up Subtitle File and select the relevant one. When I saw some test of the HDR video mode in the Mavic Air 2 for the first time, I was not particularly impressed because all the scenes shown contain the full sun in the middle of the screen. Although many people associate HDR with this sort of situation, it is not a scenario where the HDR mode really shines. The reason is that prosumer drone cameras are unable to cope properly with this very extreme situation, due to the tiny sensor and even more to the extremely basic structure of the lenses. We can see that the HDR mode is trying to represent the sky as a sphere instead of a big blob of light, and it is also revealing a good deal of detail in the shadows. But the footage is in my opinion still totally unusable, with plenty of chromatic aberration, nasty flares, lack of detail and contrast. In certain cases I would attempt shots against the sun with my Nikon D850, and with excellent lenses. The result can be at times very good, even though it is still a very hard shot that can often backfire. But it is a top full frame camera with very sophisticated and bulky lenses. This is not territory for presumer drones. You gotta know your weapons. Here is a scene of a sunrise and you can see that again with the HDR mode we have the same issue. If we really want to shoot against the sun with a drone, possibly at sunrise or sunset, as I would absolutely avoid the middle of the day, it is much better to expose for the sun, making sure that no bars in the histogram touch the right edge. By doing this, we turn the ground into a silhouette and the result can be quite pleasant. But in order to get this result, we cannot use the HDR mode as the exposure is fully automatic. Whenever we shoot footage including the sky in full daylight, we can consider it a high dynamic range situation, as the sky is much brighter and we need to reduce contrast in some way. This is the ideal territory for the HDR mode. Let's start with a gentle HDR situation. The sun is behind us and there are plenty of nice clouds in the sky. This is normal mode, the one ready to use, meant for users that don't do heavy post-processing. The result is quite good, although the elements on the ground are a bit dark and there is not a lot of detail in the shadows. In the HDR footage, in my opinion, the sky really comes alive. The structure of the cloud is beautiful, very nice reflection in the sea and more detail on the ground elements. Even without any editing at all, the image is an absolute winner. In this other scene the sun is to the left and there are some really interesting clouds on Mount Etna in Sicily. This is normal mode. Moving to the HDR one, we notice that again the clouds are more three-dimensional and reflect perfectly the light coming from the sun. There is again much more detail in the foreground. The footage is nice as it is, but I can see that it would like some extra contrast and maybe a bit of darkening. And indeed, after a very quick editing, it looks excellent. Many pro or semi-pro users tend to go for the this in a like mode, which is more suitable for heavy post-processing. So it gives more room for adapting the footage to a specific color scheme or to some unusual customer request. 
As an example here, I gave a much warmer sunset feel. But I must admit that even after serious editing, it's not easy to get better results compared to the HDR mode. I'm really impressed. Now we go into dangerous territory, as the sun is just at the left edge of the frame. It is not as bad as the first one we saw against the full sun, but there are obviously plenty of artifacts on the left part of the scene and the sky is totally burnt in a normal mode. In real life I avoid these sort of situations or else I wait for the last minute of sunset. So I shot this scene just for the purpose of comparing the two modes. Even under these brutal conditions, the HDR mode gives much better results. The clouds are still a thing of beauty, and the sky is well preserved, even on the left side. I always shoot footage in manual mode, and absolutely avoid any sort of auto exposure or auto white balance. But the price to pay for using the HDR video mode is that we have no choice but using auto exposure. But it is often a price worth paying for the excellent quality that can be obtained at times. I would avoid situation with a big change in luminosity during the same clip. A classic example is when we tilt up the camera from the ground to reveal the sky. The change of luminosity is obviously huge, and the sensor has to shift the exposure values to adapt. Even though the HDR mode does a decent job to contain this effect, we can still notice the overall variation of luminosity, and it doesn't look pretty. Under these circumstances, in my opinion, it's much better to shoot in full manual mode, and then fine-tune the luminosity in a more subtle way in post-processing. There is definitely some subtle work going on between the quad bayer sensor and the processor. This HDR mode goes way beyond simply bumping exposure and lifting the shadows. In all scenes with the sky and the ground on the frame, avoiding going directly towards the full sun, the results are really excellent, sometimes even without any editing. I especially like the way it renders clouds and the structure of the sky. This is great news for people who want to quickly post their footage on social media, or for users who do not rely on heavy post-processing. But even for pro and semi-pro users, it is often worth reshooting the scene in this mode, as the results are often hard to beat. If you're interested in drone, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Plenty of interesting stuff going on here. Bye for now, and stay safe.